Hey everyone, welcome back to this update. And what we have here are the samples that I collected from the patient's ear in the previous video. So these sort of white clumps sort of have the consistency of cottage cheese. And what I've done here, I'll pause the video for a moment. What I've done here is I've taken one of those clumps of dead skin, which are fairly moist and squishy, and I've basically smeared it across a microscope slide. So what we're seeing here, I think this is probably times 40 magnification, perhaps. Uh, sorry, times 100, I should say. And um, I've done a couple of things to the tissue to make it visible to you. So um, once I've smeared the dead skin on the microscope slide, I've soaked it in methanol, which is basically helps the, the, the cells stick to the glass slide um, and also preserves the structure of the cells. Uh, and then I've uh, applied some special dyes to it, because if you look at it raw, basically under the microscope, um, you don't really tend to see much because everything's kind of translucent and washed out and it's very difficult to see the nucleus of cells. So what I've done here is I've applied a special combination of dyes, what we call Giesmer's stain or Giesmer's solution, which is a combination of three separate dyes. And what that does is it allows us to see the nucleus inside of cells, which is important if we want to identify white blood cells, which is what I'm hoping to see here. So I'll unpause. So this isn't obviously the, the, the normal colour of tissue. So Giesemer's stain is, usually turns things kind of a violety purple, um, bluish kind of colour. But what we can see here is we can see a lot of skin cells and then obviously a lot of debris. So the kind of bluish speckly stuff is cellular debris. So, you know, bits of, of skin cells. And then there's lots of bacteria on the slide as well. But uh, if we just scroll down a little bit, we can actually see some, some intact skin cells. So right there, see those two little circles inside the kind of fried egg splodge? That, that's the nucleus of the skin cell. So what we have here are skin cells. So they're called, it's called squamous epithelium. So squamous means squash, like a pancake or a fried egg, and epithelium is skin. And we can see here again, see to the bottom right, we can see that kind of pink circle inside the cell. So that's the nucleus of the cell, which contains the DNA, and that will stain differently to the cytoplasm, which is the body of the cell. And so what I'm looking for really is a white blood cell. So you can see more intact skin cells here. And a white blood cell or a leukocyte will look very different because the nucleus will appear not as a perfect circle, so it will be quite irregular. So for example, a neutrophil, which is a very common type of white blood cell in the body, which will fight infection, um, that will have kind of a weird sort of multi-lobed nucleus um, or a, a monocyte will have will appear quite large and have quite a large irregularly shaped nucleus. So that's really what I'm looking for. Um, this kind of flowing, all these little specks that are flowing across the slide, that's just water evaporating and carrying away um, lots of debris and, and probably bacteria as well. And it, it, again, I did I did actually have a look at the tissue before I applied any methanol, and there was a lot of movement on the slide, so lots of bacteria moving around and things like that. Um, but of course now, as you can see, they're all dead um, because I applied the methanol. So, you know, really not a huge amount going on here. Again, lots of intact skin cells here. And, you know, I was, I was, usually you wouldn't expect to see such well-preserved, well-demarcated nu nuclei inside of these cells because as your skin cells uh, grow and, and get older, so they, they, they kind of move up, um, as they reach the outer layer of your skin, so the, the top layer that you can feel um, of the epidermis, they tend to lose their nucleus and become filled with um, keratin, which is like a, a kind of a tough waterproof substance. And that's what gives you this external barrier. So the fact that we can see quite well-preserved, well-demarcated um, nuclei inside these cells kind of marries up with the fact that they're shedding so rapidly. But um, just, just lots of debris, really. These thick black circles, those are just air bubbles um, underneath the, the, um, the cover slip. So probably not the best stain in the world, to be honest. I probably should have diluted the stain a little bit more and left it on and then washed it off. So it's quite a poor staining technique here. Um, but again, just this kind of blue kind of cloud mass here is just lots and lots of cellular debris, cellular debris and skin cells here, which have not stained very well. Um, and it's all kind of clumped together. Again, lots of cellular debris, all of this sort of pink blue dust on the slide uh, and a massive air bubble there. So what I was looking for, I mean, that's probably the closest thing that you could get to a neutrophil, but it's not really 
doesn't really look like much. It just kind of looks like a random blob mess, really. So I did look at a few other samples uh, with different stains. So I used right stain and an HE stain. Nothing, really. Um, this is my blood here. So unrelated, but I just wanted to show you what I was looking for. So typically, so all the sort of very pale pink circles with the sort of light middle, that, that's a red blood cell. And those purple things, those are the white blood cells that I was looking for inside the dead skin tissue. So the white blood cells should stain uh, kind of with a pink body, so cytoplasm, and then a, a very dark purple nucleus. And that thing in the middle right there, that's probably a neutrophil. So see how it has, it, it's not just one circle, it has kind of lobes to the nucleus. That's characteristic of a neutrophil which will, you know, as soon as it, there's an infection in your body, neutrophils making up the vast um, array of white blood cells in your body, neutrophils will rush to the area. So I was kind of hoping that we would see that because um, as it, that's not a neutrophil, that's probably an eosinophil, which is a special type of white blood cell in your body that fights parasites and things like that. And eosinophils can be easily recognized because they kind of have like a, a nucleus shaped like two bananas joined with a little bridge. So that's an eosinophil. Um, yeah, I was hoping to see something like this because, again, if it is an infection, then you would expect at least some kind of exudate or pus or, you know, some kind of leukocytes to be hanging around in the mix. Um, that's a lymphocyte, I think, right there, that, that small little one. Again, that's another eosinophil. And you can kind of see these two lobes of the nucleus attached with the little string at the top. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, again, and that's another lymphocyte down below. So as you can see, I was, and again, a vast array of different white blood cells there in amongst my red blood cells. So I'm not gonna die of an infection, thankfully. I have lots of white blood cells in my body. Um, that, interestingly, that guy right there in the middle with the big pink nucleus, that's a monocyte. So monocytes um, will, will kind of move into the tissue, they'll crawl into the tissue and eat the bacteria. So that's called phagocytosis, where the white blood cell engulfs the bacteria. So this is quite a nice stain again. I think this is also Giesemann's stain. But uh, unfortunately for, the, for this particular chap with a dead skin problem, no, um, no uh, leukocytes in the tissue, in the dead skin. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not an infection, but I just thought it'd be interesting to check to see if we could see that. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. If I have any further updates on this case, I will let you know. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will see you on the next video.